Fallout 4 has 37 known settlement locations and in this video I am going to go through what I think are the 10 worst settlement locations with the last one being the worst of the worst. Hi, I'm Mo and I'm trapped in Fallout. Number 10, Jamaica Plain. Jamaica Plain might have some historical significance but as a settlement is severely lacking. The layout is convoluted and pre-existing ruins and they are more of a hindrance than help. The location itself is lovely given the buildings but the settlement build area itself is isolated to a very small section of the town. Furthermore, a part of the build section is taken up with an existing structure that you cannot do much in. The uneven terrain and debris makes construction challenging, requires significant effort to clear and level the area. The settlement's layout complicates defenses as creating a cohesive and easily defensible parameter becomes pretty difficult. Additionally, Jamaica Plain is somewhat isolated, resulting in longer travel times for quest and resources. The lack of nearby resources further complicates material gathering. Given these disadvantages, Jamaica Plain is best avoided as a primary settlement in Fallout 4 and should probably be used more as a casual rest stop or to provide cover for more smaller settlement sizes. Number 9. Outpost Zimanja Outpost Zimonja is one of the most disappointing settlements in Fallout 4. It has a rather small build area and has a rather interesting structure that you cannot scrap and need to work around when building. The settlement itself is situated on a somewhat hill, complicating building efforts and limiting expansion potential. Also, in my personal experience, almost every time I fast travel to the settlement, it is always seems to be under attack. That is actually not from random settlement attacks, but rather the very nearby raider post, which is within arm's length of the settlement itself. Given these disadvantages, Outport Zimonja is best avoided again as a primary settlement. Its numerous challenges make it a poor choice for a thriving community and should instead be isolated to a much smaller one. Number eight. Green Top Nursery. Green Top Nursery initially seems appealing with its greenhouse and fertile land, but it does have significant drawbacks. The settlement's location doesn't provide easy access to abundant resources, complicated material gathering. In fact, it is rather closely located to points that tend to spawn high level enemies, such as Death Claws, Super Mutants, and Assaultrons. This means simply traveling to the location in itself can be somewhat dangerous. Overall, because of its sheer location and ignoring its aesthetic appeal, Green Top's nursery challenges make it a little bit less appealing, again, for a primary settlement. Number seven, Ten Pines Bluff. Ten Pines Bluff is a remote, almost barren location with not a lot of advantages. The rocky, uneven ground complicates building things simply because there is not much area to actually build on to begin with. On top of this, it also has two structures that cannot be scrapped, somewhat forcing you to, again, build around them. Its distance from other settlements and key locations in the Commonwealth also complicates supply lines, making it a hassle to manage. The lack of nearby resources further compounds these issues, making material gathering somewhat challenging. Given these disadvantages, Tempines Bluff is best avoided as a primary settlement, in my view, focusing more on the strategic location instead. That said, it does supply an early amount of corn crops, so that is good, but in the long run, it's not the best settlement to start your settlement journey in. Number six. County Crossing. County Crossing, despite its somewhat central location, presents significant challenges. The area is small and lacks substantial pre-existing structures, meaning settlers must start from scratch or you as a player must start from scratch when building. It does have a generous amount of building space, but the uneven land can make it a challenge to build here. Additionally, County Crossing is near several hostile areas, requiring a strong defense presence and diverting resources from other development efforts in that endeavor. The settlement's layout and lack of natural defenses further complicates construction and defense in general. Moreover, the location doesn't provide easy access to any really abundant resource. Overall, County Cross's small size, resource scarcity, and challenging layout can somewhat make it a less desirable location to build a settlement in. Number five, Somerville Place. Summerville Place is a remote and somewhat desolate location with several challenges. Its location from other settlements all the way down in the southwestern corner of the map and is also located away from any major Commonwealth location make it pretty hard to maintain, which can lead to resource shortages and let's just say logistic headaches. 
Given these disadvantages, some of our place is best avoided as a primary settlement, with settlers focusing on more strategic and resource-rich locations. It is, however, an ideal location just before going into the glowing sea, but even then, you are likely to simply walk in, given how much traveling you would be doing in the main game anyway. Due to its location and due to how close it is to other settlements, it's probably best to avoid this as any form of primary settlement. Number four, Oberland Station. Oberland Station is a small cramped location squeezed between some lovely railroad tracks and a somewhat uneven building field, limiting available building space and restricting construction efforts. The limited area makes accommodating a larger number of settlers or expanding facilities difficult. It is also somewhat restricted by large trees, which again cannot be scrapped, also leading to a restricted built area. Additionally, the station's location doesn't offer easy access to resources, but that said, it is close to Diamond City, so I suppose that is a plus. Overall, Overload Station's small size, limited resource, and challenging layout make it a poor choice for primary settlement building, and it is better suited for a more minimalistic or temporary use. Number 3. Murkwater Construction Site Murk Water construction site is a swampy, inhospitable location with numerous challenges. The terrain is marshy and uneven, complicating construction efforts and limiting expansion potential. The swampy environment leads to a rather damp and gloomy atmosphere. Additionally, the site is quite remote, far from other settlements and the key Commonwealth locations, complicating supply lines and making resource gathering an issue. It also has structures which cannot be scrapped, leading to areas that are difficult to build in. To get access to the settlement, you will actually need to take down a Mile Queen, which can potentially respawn, causing potential future settlement attacks. The combination of difficult terrain, isolation, and limited resources makes Murkwater Construction Site one of the least desirable locations for a settlement, requiring significant effort for effectively minimal returns. Number 2. Boston Airport Boston Airport appears more as a strategic location due to its proximity to the Brotherhood of Steel, but it's one of the worst settlements in the game by far. The build area is extremely limited, constrained to a very small section, making building things almost impossible. There are also other severe restrictions on what you can build. You will find it almost difficult or impossible to build water resources, place crops and more. The numerous limitations makes Boston Airport impractical for a thriving settlement and it is more better suited as a temporary outpost for a quick rest. And number one, Coastal Cottage. Coastal Cottage might seem idyllic with its ocean view, but in reality, it is far from ideal. The terrain is extremely uneven and cluttered with debris, making construction pretty frustrating. It has a rather large hole right in the middle of the settlement, which can make it even more difficult to build around. The pre-existing structures are small, dilapidated, and offers very little usable space. This also makes it very difficult to set up defenses, so you are forced to build your own structure for that. Given the amount of space it has, there actually isn't enough space to build your structure on top anyway. Its location is also quite isolated, far from other settlements and the key common of locations, again complicating supply lines and leading to resource shortages. The combination of difficult terrain, isolation and limiting building space makes it a poor choice for a settlement, demanding significant effort for again very minimal return. As said, Fallout 4 has 37 settlement locations and in this video I listed what I think are the 10 worst locations. Instead of investing your time into any of these locations, why not click on the video you see on the screen now and invest your time in what I think are the 10 best settlement locations in Fallout 4. Click on the video you see on the screen now to see what I think are the 10 best settlements in Fallout 4.